to have more than just two players playing simultaneously in different stadiums, I'm going to introduce the socket.io rooms. First, I create a new blank project and build a simple code to get familiar with the basic functionalities. And once I get that done, I will implement rooms in the main game. So what I have done so far was getting you know, the socket.io library, building an offline game and finally mixing those two together and creating an online game. I could already deploy this game but the problem is that right now it can be played by no more than two clients altogether and that's because the server cannot handle more than one stadium and one stadium fits for two players only. The way I could solve this problem is that whenever a player connects and finds a full stadium it can join to a new empty stadium and wait there for a second player to connect to the server. And the server would calculate the physics of every player in every stadium, but would only send the position coordinates and the game logic to the players that are actually interested in it. And that's where the concept of rooms will be useful, which has a helpful description on the socket.io website. The two methods I'm going to use are the join and the to. The server can put a client in a room with the join function, which has one argument, the identifier of the room. And the to function is used on emitting from the server to the client. Its argument is also a room identifier. The data from the server will be emitted only to the clients of the room specified in the to method. Before using those methods in the capsule sucker, I will create a very simple introduction program to get familiar with the concept of the rooms, for which I'm going to create a new project in the VS Code. I copied all the files from the first episode, that's where the clients and the server are sending messages to each other, and this will be my starting point. But I still need to start a new project with npm init in the terminal, and also install the express and the socket.io modules to be able to use the local server. And once that's done, first I go to the index.html, where instead of the hello button, I will have a switch button. Then I grab this button by the ID in the client.js file and in the event listener I want that if the button is clicked then if the background color of the body happens to be dark grey then it should turn to white and in any other case it should turn to dark grey. And once I'm done with that I can switch the light on and off in this imaginary room. Now let's say I want rooms where only two clients can switch the light and if a new client gets noticed that there are two clients in each of the rooms, it will go to a new room to switch the lights there. First of all I need to know how many clients are connected all together, for which I go to the server.js and declare a client no variable and set it to zero. Then every time a new client connects, its value will be increased by one. And that's when the server will put the client in a room. The room IDs will be integers starting by 1 and client number 1 and number 2 will join there. Client number 3 and number 4 will join to room number 2 and so on. So mathematically speaking the room number will be decided by the math.round client no divided by 2. That's the room number where the clients will join. And once that's done the server emits this number to the client through the server message event. The client of course is listening to that event, it will console.log the value that it got and it will also be the value of the client room variable that needs to be declared above in the client.js. Now when the button is pressed, instead of changing the background color immediately, the client emits its room number to the server through an event called button pressed. The server again uses the client's room number to decide in which room it needs to send the permit for switching the light, so it takes the client room variable, which is the ID of the room the client is joined to, and sends the permit to those clients only. This emit takes only one argument, the name of the event, which is switch from server. There is no need to transfer any data for this case. And finally back to the client again. It listens to the switch from server event and if that arrives from the server it's a sign for the client that it needs to switch the light in the room because either the client itself pressed the button or the one other client in the same room. And I'm going to test this with six browser windows so after starting the server I have these six windows in front of me. I relocate them a little bit and then 
start to press the switch buttons and I can see that one button only changes two windows background color namely the ones that belong to the same room so that's it for introducing socket.io rooms hopefully you get an idea why rooms where two capsules are playing soccer will be following the same analogy so uh, I'm back to where I left the capsule soccer game at the end of the last episode my third goal will be handling the connections and disconnections to and from different rooms and I will take care of the game logic only after that is working properly first I declare a client no variable set to zero and also a room no variable without any value then upon connection the client no will be increased by one and the room no gets its value using the same formula as for the light switch program and to make sure that it's working i will display these two values on the terminal every time a new client is connecting as for the condition if the connecting client will be player one or two i will use the client no variable instead of the length of the player post object because that will decrease when a player disconnects which could cause some conflict if a new client joins this player pause object will store the room number as well and I don't need this console.log message anymore and since from now on too many players won't be an issue I can delete this block here too what I want to be displayed now is the player pause object and the number of the body objects and I want it for every connection and disconnection event this bodies array is created in the physics engine it stores every single object created by the physics engine the stadium I mean this building already consists of 12 wall objects altogether so if it returns 13 that means that there is one additional object next to the 12 wall objects and so on if I start the server and open a few tabs let's say 5 I can check the console and I can see the content of the player pose object that tells me the number of the rooms and the players inside of those rooms now the new players are packed on top of each other and push each other away which is definitely not beneficial but the physics engine has a so-called layer property the point of that is unless one of those objects layer property is zero which is the default value then they will only collide with the same value of the layer property and since I need the objects in the same room to be on the same layer I can simply assign the layer property of the players to the room number like first room will be the first layer and so on the same for the ball object one ball should belong to every room and it should be on the same layer too so in the football object the room number will be the key and the ball itself the value and I also want to delete the ball when any of the two players disconnects so on the top of the disconnect event I can say if the football of the room where the disconnecting player is still exists then remove it from the physics engine and delete it from the football object then I add a few new infos to put on the terminal I want to console.log the current number of the players which equals the length of the player pose object the number of the footballs which equals the length of the football object and the client no variable which refers to the number of the clients that have ever connected to the server that's because the value of that will not decrease upon this connection and let me write here minus 12 so that I can see the number of the body objects not counting the 12 fall objects to make this work I need to comment out this line where I call the game logic function and where I give value to the football variable and then I can connect to the server and I can see that I have one player and zero ball because that only comes with the second player I open four more tabs then I will have five players and two balls because again one stadium is half full so no ball there then I close the second tab and then I close the second tab again then I open a new tab and if I check the console again I can see that the client number keeps increasing the number of the balls equals the number of the full stadiums so it looks like handling connections and disconnections on the server side is working my next goal would be being able to play but without the game logic what I need to do for that is modifying which data I want the server to emit to the client I go to the server loop and remember that I am using now rooms and I don't want to send any data to a room that belongs to another room 
So when I iterate through the server balls, my target room ID equals the value of the player's layer property, and instead of sending the whole player pos object, I send the player's x, y, angle, plus I also add the ID property. I send them one by one, only to the specific room. That's it for the players. And as for the balls, I'm going to iterate through all the rooms that have been created. And wherever the ball is there, that means the game is being played. And so that's where I can call the game logic function a bit later. And that will be also where I emit the football's position values of the given room. But again, I only emit them to the room where the football belongs to. And since I'm only going to use the player pos variable upon connection and disconnection, I'm going to rename it to player reg for register because it will still keep track of the connected clients but not of their current positions. And I hopefully found all of them. And then since I emitted the player positions in a new structure, I need to go to the client and find where it's listening to the position update event. I cannot iterate through the player pose anymore because it's not a dictionary, so I iterate through the client balls instead, and I add an extra condition. If the ID of the data that just arrived equals the ID of the client player, only then should it set the position to the new X, Y and angle positions. And if I start to test it, restarting the server and opening two tabs, the physics should work fine. And then when I open two new tabs, that's not so perfect. I can see every player connected to the server and not only the ones that belong to the room. Although I cannot collide with them because their layer property is different. Anyway, this is the problem I'm going to solve next before moving on to the game logic. The reason I can see those clients is that after a client connects, I emit the whole player reg object to every client which consists of all the connected player's data and the client simply instantiates them on the client side. So instead of this, I iterate through the players on the server and I only send the data of each player to the room where they are supposed to belong. And then on the client side, where it listens to the update connections event, I don't need to iterate through the data coming from the server. Instead of that, I just use the ID property of that incoming data. I don't need to check if the data belongs to the room, because that had already happened on the server side. But this way of sending position data means that I need to find out something for deleting the players on the client side upon disconnection. So in the disconnection event on the server side, I create a new event called delete player just before actually deleting the player from the player list. This will send the data of the player to the room where the player is, so that the other player in the same room will get notified that it doesn't need to display the opponent player anymore and it can delete it from the player list. So if the player with the ID that came from the server still exists, it will be removed from the physics engine and deleted from the player list. And same goes to the football object in that room, since football only goes with two players. And then, again, I will test it. I restart the server, open four tabs, and while I'm on the fourth tab, I'm going to close the third tab. And the other player on the canvas should disappear together with the ball, just like that. And as far as I can judge, Things work fine now, except that there is still no game logic. That is actually not that difficult, I just need to modify the functions on the server side a little bit, starting with the server loop, where I uncomment this game logic and I will give it the room number as argument. Then inside of the game logic function I'm using that room number for the football object, as well as for the scoring and the game over functions as arguments. And it's important that I add a new condition for the game over, namely that the game over function should be called not just if any player has scored three times, but that player has to be in the room the game over function is using as an argument. Because without this condition, whenever any player scores three times, there would be game over in every single room. Then in the game over function, I do basically the same, emitting only to one specific room and using the same condition 
for setting the scores to zero. The next function that needs to be modified is the scoring. I will need to take care of the football object again, use the same extra condition again I used in the game logic function, and I have to make sure that the scorer ID will only be emitted to the correct room. And the game setup, adding the room to the football object twice, adding the extra condition twice as well, and that should be all. On the client side there is nothing I need to change since all it does is rendering the objects based on what it received from the server. So restarting the server one more time and I'm going to open four tabs. Start a game in one room just by moving a player a little bit. Then I move on to the second room and I will try to score. Having fun. Very good. And now from the technological point of view I could deploy this game and it would be playable by multiple players or player pairs. And when I started this episode I was pretty sure that this is what I will do next, but I got a few new ideas. Not about the game mechanics, but about making the game more user friendly, like a little more dramatic effect for the game over, or for the users being able to provide their names, which will then be displayed on the canvas, things like that. It's not something crucial, but now that we made it so far, it will probably not hurt. So small user-friendly changes in the next episode, and then deploying after that.